Never duff a wedge shot again. I mean, that's like music to so many people's Exciting times. Ears, isn't it? Really. Exciting yeah. times. Well, welcome to the channel. Welcome to our live shows. We've got Harry Mayers in the studio here at Cherson Golf Club. For those of you who don't know, Harry is the head pro at the golf club. And the idea of these live shows is I want to bring in coaches to do these types of shows for 20, 25 minutes, talking about a specific shot or a specific fault yep. that we can sort of learn a little bit about and, and try and manage ourselves. Now, Harry obviously has brought in a shot for us today, which is all to do with short game. Yep. And we're going to run through the short game kind of tip or technique yep. that will help you if you're somebody that turns to duff wedges, even thin wedges. Yeah, it's going to evolve around strike in general and low point. So controlling that low point, controlling yeah. that strike with the pitches, chips, yeah, all around the green area. So yeah, yeah. And and for for those players that tend to have maybe see the tendency of a bit of anxiousness, mm. that's something that can creep in, especially yes. if you you pee that type yeah. of that, that anxious feeling, should we say, when you're coming into hitting your chip shots around the greens or even pit shots. I know I've been through it myself. Um, Lester on the channel, he goes through oh, yeah. it on a regular basis. But hopefully what we're going to do is try and focus on a technique that Correct. takes the mind away from those negative feelings or thoughts that you might have and hopefully improve the chipping. So I'm going to okay. hand you over to Harry, um, who is going to run through his kind of ideas. I'm going to jump in with some questions on him. Yep. But ultimately from this live show, what we want to try and do is get the point across first as to what Harry's trying to um, share with us. And then if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to comment down below because um, Jordan is here in the comments. He's going to sort of share with us some of your questions later on in the video as we yeah. go through. So Perfect. fire away, Harry. So when we're talking about pitching, so let's talk about pitching. So what we're trying to do is control that low point. So we're actually hitting the ground at the same point every time. Yeah. Okay, so the common fault I see with people is their weight distribution is wrong okay. generally to start. Okay, so their dynamic balance or their weight is generally slightly towards the back foot. Yeah. Okay, uh, another fault is they try and flick the ball or help the ball up into the air, which is a common fault. Generally, that one could cause a thin as well, the leading edge coming up into the ball. What, what, what's the thought in that though? Why do they do that? Because I mean, at the end of the day, we've got lots and lots of loft on yeah. these wedges already. We don't necessarily need to help the ball in the air, do we? No, not necessarily, not at all really. You, you let the wedge do all the work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they just obviously, especially in situations where you've maybe short-sided yourself, uh, you've got a big Get bunker in your way and you've got little green to work with. Yeah. They're just trying to flick the ball, yeah. add in as much loft as possible. Also, probably from players as well that tend to dig the leading edge mm -hmm. in. So if you're somebody that digs the leading edge in, you might be someone that wants to lift that, lift the wedge out of the ground yeah. as a feel as well, yeah, which yeah. then in turn is the same, same, same result, thing. isn't it? Yeah, same result. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about, obviously, uh, so where our weight should be. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to talk a lot about rotation as well. Uh, keeping the hands quite quiet. Okay. Okay, so looking at a pitch shot, what I see is a lot of people with their weight starting on the back foot. Okay, ball position, generally they'll have sort of in the middle because that's their sort of normal reference point. Yeah. But like I say, their weight sort of back here, hands slightly further back, and then they're trying to almost hit up on it. Yeah, so okay. they're almost like falling. Falling backwards, yeah, yeah away that, from that the ball. backwards this okay. way. Okay, yeah. so what we're gonna do within the pitch shot, if we focus on our sternum as our sort of center point, yeah. what we wanna try and do is have that almost just slightly ahead of the ball. Okay. Okay, so I like to imagine sort of almost probably 60, 40 from yeah. my front to back foot. Okay, so my sternum now is right sort of on the top of that front of the ball. Okay. Okay, so from that position there, I want to keep this center point. I don't want to laterally move off it. No, 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 I see okay. that all the time. Which you see a lot yeah. from day to day. So like you say, we're trying to maintain this center point as we turn back. And then as we come through, we're trying to just turn through. Yeah through the shot. Love that. Okay. okay. So we're not trying to help that ball up at all, no. but we're also not trying to dig that leading edge in. No. 
which is a main problem also for people that try and scoop the ball up into the air. Yeah. They try and get their hands pulling down. And, and, and I see it as well, and I'll, I'll just, be, again, I'll be your, your guinea pig, should yep. we say, for these types of shots. Um, so, you know, if you, talking about handle staying forward here, so as we come into the shot and, and staying there, okay, what, what you tend to see is, if you can get the player to turn a little bit, yep. they're naturally gonna rise Correct. as they turn to their left, or left hand is turning to their right, but as they turn to their left out of the way, hips rotate through, and. There's some drills I know you can yeah, share with us on that. that. That naturally wants to rise up the handle anyway. Yes. So it gets the leading edge out of the ground yeah, as yeah. we come through the shot. So that's a natural progression, which I think is important Correct. for people to know that that's what yes. happens. But if we, if we just hit a couple of shots where I get the sense of almost falling backwards and doing that action of what yeah. we see from, from okay. players there, Harry. Um, I'm going to hopefully I've dotted the face up, so I'm hopefully going to get some, get some just numbers, a little bit of num, feedback. a little bit of number. So start so, with a weight a little bit on that right side. Yeah, so just feeling like I'm, I'm sitting leaning, back on it, sitting this way on it. Yeah. Okay, so getting the sense that I'm back here, and, and then handles the almost back a little bit, and then as yeah. I come through, I'm going to get the sense of trying almost to help trying to it. help it, help that ball in the air Correct. from from there, and see what numbers we get. So you can hear, yeah, like you I can, can hear, hear that. that straight away it, as a as a clunky kind Clunk. of because i've because i've caught the ground a fraction before the ball a little bit heavy mm -hmm. um if we look down the line um i'm actually hitting up on the ball yeah by 0. 0.6 degrees so i'm actually hitting that ball i'm coming from down to up yes. as i come through which you you could hear from the strike correct it was a clunky kind of sound which means yeah. i've caught the ground before the ball now obviously i've got a mat here yeah, that mat is going to be a little bit more helpful, forgiving, yeah. forgiving than what I'm going to get maybe on the golf course, especially in, this time of year as in well. In the UK, yeah, when it's wet. soft, yeah. Um, but everything else looks pretty neutral, doesn't it? Yeah, the path looks neutral. Path looks good. Face, everything else looks good. But it's ultimately we want to try and we're trying to create um, a downward approach, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, hundred percent. If we want to get that spin rate up a little bit, because at the moment, yeah. at, at, with that shot there at. at 4,000 yeah. 4, revs is a max, okay? Then obviously we want to try and generate a little bit more spin than that if we can. Correct. Okay, so, so talk me through what you want me to do from so the setup. So if you were in your original position that you were in, yeah, so, so weight sort of backwards. Back, handle slightly back. So looking at your sort of sternum point here yeah. is actually behind the ball. Absolutely. It's it is. where you hit that last yeah. shot. Correct. So if I set up here and I push that, I lean yeah, so you myself. Just push, lean yourself into that left side a little bit. So I now okay. feel as though I've got that up here. club almost just in front of that ball there. Correct. As a sternum point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I want your hands to stay pretty neutral. So not the, feeling. No. Not feeling like I'm pushing forward. No. But just feeling. Yeah. So, so very just neutral with the center of your body almost. Yeah. So belly button. Okay. Good. So into that position, feel that, feel that. So this is quite a good little drill actually for just lots of you just to let, let the club hang. You know, if you, you're in your offices or wherever you are at this moment in time, you know, get yourself into a position where you can just hang that club. And then just as you lean forward, let that, that just notice that club move yeah. in just in front of that golf ball. Okay, instantly the, the weight, the pressure, pressure has changes. completely gone from what was probably 80% on my right leg, my, yeah. my trail leg to now Oh, a good 70, 60, 70 yeah. percent of my weight feels like it's now on my yeah, knee. Yeah, because leg. you've changed from a position where you are probably 70 percent on yeah. this side to the other side. So yeah, it's going to okay. feel like a massive, yeah, massive change. Really like that. Okay. Okay. So from there, we're going to try and keep the hands fairly quiet. Yeah. So as you take away. Yeah. And then from that point, we're going to keep the weight where it is. Yeah. And then just turn. Okay, so as I turn through, I want to get the sense of that way, almost yeah, like so. my chest and my bill, my peak of my hat or my nose, kind of go with the shot. Correct. Okay, don't want to see me kind of lean and still looking back here. That old cliche of head down. Yeah. Myth. Head moves with me. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So maintaining, I'm going to really get a sense of that sternum point staying over the ball in this position. Maintain that place. And there, different, completely different sound, um, wasn't it? Yeah, sort of click. Like ball, yeah, ball divot, ball, ball yeah. divot. Um, and I feel like my low point, whereas my kind of low point on the first swing was, let's say, back here, 
to a golf ball that sat here, back here. Yep. I've now, I feel like I've moved my low point, if anything, just slightly, slightly ahead. ahead of the ball, yeah. And That's you can ball. tell that as well because of the launch. The launch comes out slightly lower. Slightly so lower. So you're actually striking it in the correct part of the club head. Yeah. Uh, which is slightly lower down on the club face. Yeah. Uh, you're going to gain a bit more spin, like that spin number. That's 5-1 now from 3-9. Yeah. So we've gone from 3-9 to 5-1. Yeah, so you've increased the spin. My angle of attack is now 6.9 degrees down, where it was basically neutral. Yeah. Uh, if anything, up. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, interestingly, my path has path. moved yeah. slightly. Yeah, path, path's changed slightly. Would so, you say that's anything to do with not enough, quite enough rotation? Probably not enough rotation. So you almost, you've left, the, obviously, the weight stayed where it should be. Yeah. But almost the hands or the chest sternum hasn't rotated quite no. enough. Okay, so I'll just do that again. I'll, get, I'll go through that little routine. Feeling that drop from my sternum position just slightly ahead of the ball. Yeah. Okay, I hands feel... Hands quiet. Yeah, hands quiet. I feel the weight is on my left side naturally just falling there. Maintain that position, turn through. That's a lovely shot. Very Again, good. Be interested to see what happens to the path that time because I really got the sense of turn, like turning no, through it. There's no movement on, on oh, you shouldn't see too much movement, but the start position is pretty, pretty good. Yeah, yeah path better. is quietened down. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So I, my, my angle of attack is seven yeah. degrees down now. Yeah. Okay. I'm not doing. I'm not trying to hit down on it. No, that's, that's right. It's I'm, just moving that. If anything, I'm trying to get point. up and out of the shot. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm trying to turn and get my body to rotate more. Uh, my path is quietened down by half, so I'm now two degrees into two out. Two degrees, which is good. Uh, face is pretty neutral, but my spin. Spin's just. I've gone, gone from three nine up, hasn't it? to six seven. Yeah. That's really interesting, isn't it? But you can see the flight. The flight comes down. Naturally comes yeah. down because I'm probably delivering handle slightly further yeah, forward. I'm delivering less, less loft. loft. Yeah, that's so right. So my launch is lower, but my spin rate is up. Yeah. Okay. Just explain. If I'm somebody that is um, going through this process, and like you saw there, my initial reaction was, if I'm kind of falling back here, I'm not necessarily rotating correctly into the shot. Mm -hmm. Is there is there a drill that we can do to make sure that we get turning through the shot? making sure that yep. we get that. So if I grab a tour stick. Oh. So we've got tour sticks in the studio. I mean, it could be a, it could be a ruler, it could be anything, couldn't it? Yeah. As a sense of... Like I say, so if you hold that one on your grip there. Okay, yeah. so run that, I'm gonna run, run it that down, down the shaft of your the club. The side of the shaft almost, or even okay. slightly underneath it. And then there. as you grip the club, hold it in position. Yeah. Okay, and then this side of the torsic that we've got is gonna run left side of your body. Obviously for a right-handed golfer. Yeah. Okay, so, so into side. that position. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So what this is gonna do is as, if you're not turning correctly or enough, okay, on the downswing, it's gonna hit the side of your body. Yeah. Okay. So like you say, people who generally flick quite yeah. a lot or just don't rotate enough, it's going to hit the side of your body. So yeah. you've got to almost get out the way so it doesn't hit the body. Okay. Right. Um, there's, there's, there's lots of tools that you can get for this. There's, um, there's one called TRS, which is Tor Rotation Stick. Right. Okay. Which kind of just, just screws into the, if this is something you're going to work on, you know, on a regular basis, it just takes that that, that feeling yeah, of that, that out the hand. Pressure, so you can yeah, get a little it. tall rotation T TRS, tall rotation stick, just sort of sits on the on the butt of the club and then extends out just like this rod would. Right. Um, you see other people sticking the rods down. Rods down the club. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so just gripping it into that position. Gripping it into that position. Again, I'm gonna get the sense of trying to get my sternum to just to feel slightly ahead. This way. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna now get the sense of trying to just turn through and not allow that, that stick to hit me through. Slightly oh, clipped me. Clip slightly, a little slightly, bit. Slightly, but not bad. Like I really got a sense of moving this way. Yeah. Like it was a, a real conscious move for me, which has probably caused me to pull it a little bit with the, with the face. But Okay, and again, okay. so keeping that weight a little bit more on yeah. that front side and then turn through. Better. That's better. That didn't was really... Me, didn't hit me at all no. there. So that was a lovely strike as well. Yeah. You could hear it. Yeah. And um, 
Okay, so that deals with somebody who is who's struggling maybe with the rotation. rotation. So I would be 100%, I would yep. be one of those players that would uh, be a natural drawer of the ball. I'm someone that's always quiet with the hips, mm -hmm. not, not, not turning enough. If I'm under a bit of pressure, you'll see me kind of get stuck and flick, flick it yep. all over the place. So, um, okay, what about, question, what about if they still, once they're in this position, Harry, wanna they want to move to that they're back. still yep. falling into their old habit of falling back this okay, way. Okay, so I would, what I would do, I'd get into this, obviously, position, and I'd even place a ball almost under their right heel. Okay. Okay. So it, it doesn't allow them to actually fall back Yeah. because they could fall off balance. Uh, so it just keeps that weight on the left side and gets it moving off that ball yeah. rather than onto it. Yeah. What I like about that is, um, um, so what happens is with lots of players is you, you find, and we're all, we're all guilty of this, is that when you're going through transitional changes within your golf swing, the, your natural reaction of hitting the golf ball will always come back at you. So um, when people are thinking about swing changes and things, when they get under the gun or on, out on the golf course, they still want to hit the ball. Yeah. So their mindset is all then about hitting rather than actually the technique that they're trying to work mm -hmm. on. I think by having something that sits under the heel there, I mean, I remember Ernie Els hitting this, doing this for a few, you know, right, on yeah. tour with a, with a door stop under his, door stop, under his yeah. thing there. So, um, what this does, I think, more so than anything else, when I've practiced with it in the past, is it just makes you more aware, more conscious of yeah. that weight, um, of that heel being slightly up. It almost makes you more aware that you've got the weight pushed onto your left side just that little yes. bit more. And because it's different and uncomfortable, yeah. it's not the most comfortable position. No, it isn't. It, it, it makes you think, I don't want to come back here. So it makes you think about keeping Going that. Going forward. Yeah, yeah, keeping that technique exactly where you want it to sort of work towards. Yeah. So it's more of a conscious drill, isn't it? It's something that you try and get someone to think about, um, which hopefully takes their mind off, um, off of that from there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 100%. One thing that I've got, yeah. um, where, which I want to talk about, is, is we talk about strike location um, mm -hmm. as in from a low point point a point of view yes um, something that I think about when I'm out on the golf course which certainly helps me when it comes to just getting around the golf course and and um, focusing on strike because obviously strike is king strike is what is really really important yeah. when it comes to getting all the spin numbers right execution right all of those sorts of things so when I'm a, when I'm out on the golf course and I think about um, where do I where do I want to put that ball position when I'm playing a shot? Yeah. Um, where do I want to make sure that I'm I'm, I'm getting ball then divot ball then mm -hmm. divot as a feeling? Yeah. What I will do is you'll see me especially for little pitchy shots and small shots, is you'll see me kind of do a few of these, brushing and bruising the surface just a yeah. fraction. So like a feeling. As a feeling, but what I'm doing is I'm making myself really aware of where my divot starts. Yeah not necessarily where it ends, but Strike more location, where, it, yeah. where it starts to impact the ground. And that's when, if I'm in this position here, I know that I want my ball position, ball position. kind of yeah. on that point, if not just behind that point. Correct. Um, which, you know, at the end of the day, getting around a golf course is important. Mm -hmm. Technique's important to make changes, and that's something you can do on the practice ground and around the chipping green. But when you're out playing golf, you still need to score. You still need to get the golf ball around the golf course, and there's many ways of doing it. So for me, just just doing that little drill, getting the sense once I've got my setup position right, that little drill of impacting the ground, focusing on where my club is landing into the ground. Yeah. Then that enables me to be able to put my ball position exactly where exactly you've been. Exactly where that point is yeah. impacting the ground, and then I can go ahead and execute the shot Hit from that there. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. And get that right. No good drill. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's something that I, I work on and think about um, when it comes to playing these little pitch shots uh, around the grid. Anything else that you want to report on this particular type of shot? I think we've gone through a few I little drills think, there. Yeah, we've gone through uh, most of it, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't think anything really springs to mind, but it's all about just the most important one is keeping your sort of sternum or your weight distribution 
that bit more forward. Yeah. And then from there, it's just keep it there, turn through. Rotate through. So the short game, I like to think as it could be made very simple, um, but people make it complicated. Mm. So it's almost just trying to keep, like I said, weight forward, keep it there, turn through. Yeah, like it, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep okay. it simple, stupid. Can we move, should we move on to some questions yeah, yeah, if we've we'll got anything that's questions. come into the, um, um, into Stuart, the feed? From Stu, how active are your hands? Do you add any speed to the hands at all? So with the speed of the hands, I like certainly from sort of a small pitch shot, I like to keep my hands as quiet as possible and do it all with my body. Um, so like I said, it's, it's very, so I try and keep this inactive hand movement down the bottom. Um, and I just like to use my bigger parts of my body, so my sort of sternum or my torso rotation through the ball, rather than getting the hands coming down. Yeah. Because I think then you're looking at strike location. If you release the club slightly early, you're gonna be bottoming out early, hitting it fat. Rely on the bigger parts rather than the smaller. Yeah, That's I mean, where I'd go. Stuart, wasn't it? Was it Stuart? Stuart. So, yeah. um, Stuart, like, there's there's a number of ways to get this kind of done. Mm -hmm. I think what Harry's talking about is is really focusing, as he's quite rightly said, on his on his bigger muscles and make it as simple as possible. Mm. There are ways in which you can start to get that club to work a little bit more and and. But, but ultimately, when you start to use the smaller muscles and then your hands and things like Relying that, you're, on just, timing. you're going to rely on timing a lot. Mm. And um, this is something that I'm not saying you can't use them because there's ways in which you can, um, uh, going into more detail of trying to deliver maybe a little more spin or less spin and things like that. Or there's lots of different, and, yeah, and loft yeah. And, and all that and, and how you manage your spin loft, which the... We can go into spin loft, but yeah. it's, it's, it's to do with creating more spin and less spin on the shot. But the more you activate your hands and get your hands working, the more you're going to rely on timing, as Harry said, which means that you've got to practice it. Not saying yeah. you can't do it, because you see lots of players on tour oh, who, yeah. who do that. You know, you look at, look at um, Shane Lowry, who is probably one of the most impressive short game mm. players there is with pitching. You know, he's quite active. But he practices oh, yeah. a lot. Hundred um, percent. He practices an awful lot, and he works hard on it. And it's you know for for top players who have got lots of time on their hands to go and and work on this, and um, don't necessarily um, feel anxious or nervous about shots like that. Yeah. No problem. You can do that. But I think for this type of shot, um, to simplify it, take the hands yeah. out of play to, 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 of play, to yeah. a point. Yeah. You know, preset them and just turn the body through the shot. Correct. That's, that's, how that's play. the best way, I think, probably to explain that. Jordan, what else have we got in the... Um, we're good. Good. Absolutely. Well, um, I think we've covered that particular shot really well. I think yep. we've got a few drills there that people can, can take away and work on. Um, there's lots of other options to play these types of shots with, which I'm sure you've got lots of questions on. If you're coming back to watching this live show later, I'm sure there's lots that people can think. Please pop down in the comments as well. If you've got any questions, we can jump in and, and answer those. We will also put a link in the description for Harry. So if you want to come and check out Harry or yeah, uh, come and check contact, me out. Come and, yeah, come and, come and check him out. If you want to get in contact with him, we're going to put that in the description of this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. A big thank you to Harry for you uh, taking your time to come in the studio and uh, share with us your thoughts. My pleasure. On your short And I hope it's uh, helped everyone's games. Absolutely. That's the main thing. Couldn't agree more. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button if you like what you're seeing from these lives, and we'll see you all again very soon.